Continuing our breaking news from the eastern shore, state police say they now have a suspect in custody for at least one arson in Accomack County. Yeah, the big question right now, is that suspect connected to the nearly 80 fires that have terrorized the county since November? The suspect is 40-year-old Tanya Bundick. She's from Parksley. Bundick was arrested during a traffic stop just minutes after a fire was reported at a vacant building in Melfa. Police found that fire around 1140 last night on Airport Drive. Bundick was pulled over just after midnight, and state police say another person is being questioned in connection with the case. So we begin our team coverage this half hour with Tenio Size Andy Fox. And Andy, a major breakthrough for investigators. Tell us about what else you've learned this midday. Uh, Don and Katie, you know, 10 on your side's been covering this since the first fire started in November. Uh, photographer Aaron Kurtz and I were up here, uh, along with Joel Hilton has been up here as well. We've all been up here covering this, and McNamara you'll be hearing from. And when you come up here and you listen to the scanner chatter, I mean, everyone is listening to at night of the scanner chatter because everyone's so concerned about it. And there is also great concern about what you're about to see from Facebook. Facebook has been talking about a car, a gold colored minivan. Well, here it is for the first time, 10 on your side, able to show you the car that the two were stopped in. This was the gold minivan that is, now you can see the evidence tape on there. You can also see uh, the dusting for fingerprints. Uh, out of respect for the, uh, the car and the, uh, the sheriff's office here, we aren't gonna go up to it, uh, but you can see how the seal has been broken with the evidence tape. Now, the fire started. This is who's been arrested. Tanya has, uh, Tanya has been arrested. Uh, I went inside to talk with her, uh, but she did not wanna talk. Uh, the fire started around 11.40 on Airport Drive in Melfa. Law enforcement made a traffic stop and they found Tanya inside the vehicle. Two people were taken into custody. We have been told her fiance, Charlie Applegate, is now in custody being questioned but has not been charged officially that we know of. Uh, but it is believed that he is thought to be involved. The two live together along with her two sons. The two were supposed to be married in May we have found out. Uh, she is charged with one felony count of arson and one felony count of conspiracy to commit arson. Earlier today, 10 on your side, found Charlie Applegate's father and asked him about what he thought about what was going on. I have no comment. Do you know anything about it? I have no comment. Not, nothing at all? Nothing. Do you think it has anything I have no comment. Please don't do this, okay? Okay. Thank you. Okay. So we're back here at the minivan. We are expecting a news conference at 3.30, and we will be asking a lot more questions as to exactly how this whole case broke. But I will tell you uh, that the Ta Tasley uh, Volunteer Fire Department, the Tasley uh, Volunteer Fire Company, uh, he, the Applegate was at one time associated with it. We are being told by the fire company that he is no longer associated with the fire company and has not uh, driven with them and fought fires with them for a couple of years. Uh, they are devastated by this. And of course, uh, the volunteer firefighters out here, they have been working so hard to put out these, these fires that have just held this county uh, hostage, if you will. And now investigators, state police, having a news conference at 3.30 to announce what they believe is the finality of the whodunit. That's the latest here from Accomac. Guys, back to you. All right, Andy Fox on the Eastern Shore. The reaction we're hearing so far is somewhat surprised that a woman is implicated, but no surprise that a former firefighter also being implicated. Again, these are charges right now, and of course, we've got to work our way through the process. Now, we also have additional information on the man being questioned by police at this hour. Our team coverage continues now with 10 on your sides and McNamara. And what have you found? Well, Katie, as you well know, 10 on your side was the only TV station up on the eastern shore yesterday working this story. We spoke to some arsonist hunters. That's what they called themselves. They started a page on Facebook. They made T-shirts and we talked to them and we said, do you think you're walking by this person, whoever this is? Do you think you know the person? And they said, we're almost sure we do. We're almost certain we do. The shore is a very big area, but it's a very small community. And sure enough, one of the arsonist hunters tell us they were going to be a photographer at the wedding of Tanya Bundick and Charlie Applegate. So that's how small uh, this community really is. And we actually spoke to one of Charlie Applegate's friends earlier today who lives in the area where Charlie works. And we said, did you ever think 
that he may be involved in all of this. Here's what he said. It's been speculation, you know, around everywhere around here that uh, a fireman must be doing it, you know. But, hmm, that one uh, last night where they captured her or wherever, uh, seemed to me a little crude for the way the other ones have been set. So there's still that speculation. Is this connected to that string of nearly 80 arsons at last count uh, 77? This is the door you're looking at uh, outside the sheriff's department, the door to the jail where another suspect will come if someone else is charged. Again, we know that Charlie Applegate, the fiance of Tanya Bundick, is, at Bundick, is actually who's being questioned right now. No charges just yet. We're going to continue to monitor this. We know they live together in that home in the Parksley area that you saw Andy had visited earlier today. Uh, so we're going to gather more information from everyone, including community reaction of that that feeling of relief that maybe just maybe you won't have to listen to the scanner. I mean, there were points uh, during this five month investigation where you turn on the scanner and there'd be more people listening to the Eastern Shore scanner than we're listening to, say, Chicago or maybe uh, the LAPD. So it was just this astronomical surge of hundreds of people tuning into the scanner because they're afraid either their property or property near theirs would burn down overnight. So some of that that relief is starting to settle in. We'll have more on this story tonight at 5 o'clock. Live in Accomack County, I'm Ann McNamara, 10 on your side. All right, Ann, thanks. Again, state police will have much more for us on this investigation during a news conference at 3.30 this afternoon. And we will stream that on wavy.com. Both Andy Fox and Ann McNamara will remain on the Eastern Shore covering this major break for police throughout the day. They'll both join us for team coverage of this story during our 90 minutes of news beginning tonight at 5 o'clock. And, of course, we will follow developments on the arson arrest all day long at wavy.com. And besides the latest on this morning's arrest, you'll find a timeline of the fires, nearly 80 of them since November. We also have a map of all the arsons as well as photos of dozens of them. You can get to all of that coverage from our homepage.